Hi, this is part two. It's a neat trick that I got from my uh, vocal coach. It opens up your vocal cords, mm -hmm. I think. You know what I think? What? Trilly! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, guys, <laughs> shooting today is cancelled because I'm not gone wild. So I think No. Okay. The last day in Praline was actually a day in Ladig. Actually about 15 minutes away from Praline Island where mm -hmm. we stayed, like in the ferry. So it was a very nice day trip to do. We took the first ferry, we left on the last one. Yeah. But I think it is worth mentioning that it's a very nice day trip from Pralen, but not from Mahe. I mean, from you don't Mahe, know that. I know that from experiences of uh, other people, oh, not yeah. ours. And uh, the fact that it takes only 15 minutes to do the ferry from uh, Pralen to Ladig makes it really convenient as a day trip from Ladig. Because uh, in Pralen. Mahe it's like an hour and a half? An hour and a half or an hour and, and 15 minutes per, per direction. It is pretty exhausting to do it as a day trip from mm -hmm. Mahe, but from uh, Pralen it was very convenient. Yes, and the island is so... Cute. It's the smallest of the three main islands in Seychelles and it's so small. I think they only have like around 5,000 5, people. Yeah, there. I was going around like 3,000. So we'll see who's closer. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a very small population. There are rarely any cars, like the main way all the residents and the tourists go around the island is by bicycle, which is so nice. Mm -hmm. It was a different experience because up until that point we've been driving around yeah. Praline Island and then we just got there and rented a bike and yeah, started it was pedaling. Like everywhere. Yeah, just like, pedaling, pedaling wherever you want to go. I'm not gonna lie, I always have like five minutes of terror when I get on a bicycle because once I, I crash. Remember. I remember. And I always need like to get my confidence back because I don't usually ride bicycles. But after those five minutes, it was really nice and fun. Yeah. But I think it affected my ability to document the day as we go on because I was so focused on cycling. We don't have a picture. We don't have anything of us cycling. Cycling. We don't have anything. Yeah. We really need to step our documenting game. We truly need to do that, but I think it's gonna take some time, but we'll get there. So essentially, I think in, in Ladig, what we did is actually what we did mostly in Praline Island. <laughs> we went to beaches. No, but <laughs> Ladig Island does have like some sort of attractions you can see. Two things you can do on Ladig if you go for a day trip and you don't have all the time in the world. You can go to amazing beaches and have a day at the beach and relax, have some coconuts, some fresh fruits. Yeah. They have all those sorts of like really fun, luxurious uh, vacation type of uh, day. And you can also go to Sors d'Arge, which, which is it, a beach. It is a beach, but it's more of like a natural reserve and you have more interesting rock formation there, more like unconventional mm -hmm. shore combination. Yeah, like you said, it's not really a beach that is convenient to get in because it has a lot of tiny rocks mm -hmm. and it's pretty shallow most of the way. Yeah. So it's very beautiful and you have a lot of uh, like chill out sections and areas on the shore. Mm -hmm. There which were hammocks, yeah, they had nice. like really nice sitting areas. 
and it was fun. Yeah, yeah. So this was the fun part of Salt the Elgin, but getting into the water, eh, yeah. not so much. I was the only one that got in, Yeah. and it wasn't the best experience. And you can also see the giant tortoise. Yes, if you go to Salt which, the was, which was a very, very cool experience. The giant tortoises, it was a really nice experience, even though in Seychelles there is a separate island where they live freely. But the way you go there is by paid uh, boat trip. We didn't feel like we wanted to do that because we wanted to go to La Digue anyway and said so the giant tortoise will be there, so why do the private island tour? Like looking back on that, it could probably be nice seeing the tortoise in their own island because in Sauce d'Argem they have like their... It's an exhibit, I think you call it. Like they have their own like area. Little, uh, little area with a fence and they were very cute and they were just being fed yeah. and they were very naughty naughty <laughs> but they are like more contained to a certain area and I think it probably on the private island they are They're roaming free. around freely so it's be more natural to look at them there and the place where we were it was very uh, a petting station at the zoo or something it that had more of, of that kind of vibe yeah the last thing about Latil regarding the cycling it's not very hard to cycle there because most of the time it's pretty flat but you do if you want to go to like Grand Arms and then late and like the adjacent uh, beaches mm -hmm. you do need to cross a hill which was kind of hard for us because we're not used to cycling. Yeah, and I think most of the struggle was from not knowing for how long we need to walk with our bicycles. Like the way back was way easier. Yeah. It's always easier the way back. Comment below if you agree with me, the way back is always easier. The day after, we took the ferry to Mahe Island. We took a brand new, improved, upgraded rental car, which had air conditioning and radio. We even have radio! The last car didn't have radio. Now we can have a party! I forgot all about it. <laughs> I forgot everything about Mahe, I think, just like blended. Yeah, you know why you forgot it? Because we were supposed to leave for Thailand after Seychelles. Right. But when we were in Mahe Island, the corona situation in Thailand skyrocketed. So we needed to change our plans. So a lot of our time was spent checking on the situation, deciding if we want to go to Thailand anyway or not, and then changing all our plans. So a lot of our free time actually went on arranging our next destination so even though we are still on vacation things have changed and again this vacation was all about chilling out so we did barely nothing <laughs> i think it's a little bit because in praline island we wanted to explore and it was a bit a smaller island so it was easier to drive around and get to a beach mm -hmm. and when we got to the hotel in uh, Mahe. Mahe Island which was right above two amazing beaches we didn't feel like we wanted to go yeah, farther like, out why would we drive for two hours to get to an, a beautiful beach when we already have two beautiful beaches yeah 10 15 minutes away from us and this is what we basically did most of the days we just woke up, uh, put some sunscreen, and then a little mm -hmm. bit more sunscreen until we were fully covered with <laughs> sunscreen. Sunscreen, man. Right? And then we would just go to a beach, stay in the water or, or on the shore for like an hour, two hours. Yeah. Come back to come the back. resort, <laughs> chill out, do yeah. nothing. But we do want to talk a little bit about what we did. There are like three things we want to mention. Surprisingly, the first two places we want to mention are beaches. Uh, the first one was a really, really, really amazing and uh, magnificent beach called Ansole yes. or the beach of the sun. It's a very small beach, so we figured when it's high tourist season, 
it's probably gonna be hard getting to the beach but because we were traveling during covid time we always had space there and it was a really nice beach it has the softest sand it has like all sorts of nooks where you can go to and like look at the crabs in the rocks in the water we built coconut boats <laughs> Try to see which one will make it. One failed, one failed <laughs> miserably. Miserably, and the other one failed lightly. It, and it was standing for some time. A little bit. Yeah. And until the first wave hit it or something like that. It blew my mind every time that you can stand on a beach and then just go backwards like 10 meters, 15 meters, and you're in the jungle. Mm. Which is pretty crazy because the beaches that we are used to from home are just beaches. I mean, behind them there are more dunes maybe or buildings, but yeah. it's not a jungle right near mm -hmm. the beach. So it's pretty amazing, I think. Yeah. That so part. that was our favorite beach in Mahe. And yes, we didn't go to... <laughs> a lot of other beaches. Just one more. <laughs> the, yeah. the second beach is at Petit Arms, which is ironically the bigger of the two. <laughs> and it's connected to the Four Seasons Resort. So the, if the Four Seasons build the whole resort next to it, you bet your ass it's going to be a very good beach. But it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's um. nice, but it's not as good as Ansole. Like, the, the, I think the biggest thing for me, the sand was hard. It was hard to walk on the sand and that's not the feeling that I'm looking for when I'm walking on sand. I mean, I think you're being a bit too harsh on this beach. At the point that where when we got to this beach, we've already experienced a lot of other beaches in Seychelles. Mm -hmm. I think that if this was the first beach we encountered when we got to Seychelles, we would be pretty amazed. But by that time, we already experienced all the beaches in Praline, La Digue and Anne Sole in Mahe. Yeah. So when we got there, it was like, a nice beach, but not as good as the others. And also because it was part of the resort, there were much more people there. Yes. And I think the biggest drawback for me, besides the sand, which is still the biggest, is that because it's part of a resort, you had to park your car outside of yeah. the resort and then you had to walk the way down. It was about 10 to 15 minutes, but it's under the sun, it's a slope down, so when you come back it's a slope up. Yeah. So it's not it's not as convenient as just going to one of the other beaches. If you are staying, the result must be perfect. Mm -hmm. But if not, yeah, other beaches are the... The choice. Yeah, the right. choice to go. Yeah. Apparently you can't swim in all the beaches in Seychelles. This one is very pretty and big but the sign said it has dangerous currents so we're not going to get inside we're just gonna look for a bit and then we'll drive back to our apartment maybe buy some fresh fruits and go to a different beach to swim in for the day other than that we had one more attraction that we felt is notable. Yeah, we did! Which was, I think, the highlight of uh, Mahe Island for yes, both of us. it was so nice. I loved it so much! And surprisingly, it is not a beach. It's not a beach! Amazing! <laughs> it's a botanical garden. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Boring! Yeah. But actually, it was not that boring. It was pretty amazing because it's not just a botanical garden like you'll see in other places. Which, it's... I have to say, I love botanical gardens anyway. I'm nerdy like that. I like to see flowers and plants. But, continue, it's not like other botanical gardens out there. Because it features a lot of exotic flowers and uh, tropical flowers that you won't see in a usual botanical gardens. And also because the person that manages the gardens and that ha gives you the tour is actually a very interesting guy. Oh my god, that is the craziest thing about this botanical garden. I think it's called Kotmania. Yeah, Kotmania. Kotmania, exactly. with only one person managing the whole park. His name was Mark. Mark? I think Mark. I think Mark also. I think Mark. His name was Mark. That guy was the ambassador of Seychelles 
to the US and the UN and he met with all sorts of political leaders. He was the advisor to the prime minister for a lot of years. For Seychelles prime minister. After a while, he was like, I want to retire. I want to go back to farming. So he did. <laughs> and he tells the craziest story about his life when you go there. And he takes you all over his garden and tells you all about the flowers and where they come from and what he does with them. It's like, such a cool experience. Yeah, he was so knowledgeable about each and every flower and or each and every tree. It yes. was always like, what is this flower? This is Takata. What is this tree? This tree only grows here and there and you can only see it blooming at this season. It was pretty... Takata. 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 Okay. So if you do go to Mahe Island and you're even slightly interested in flowers, definitely visit Kotmania. Yes. We mm -hmm. took a lot of photos, so maybe we can display them here. You won't really feel <laughs> how it is to walk inside the yeah, garden. And it was really was pretty. And we, we were just mesmerized by Mark and his story, so we forgot about recording. <laughs> and we need to get better at yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that we did have more plans of things we wanted to do in my island. We wanted to spend a day at Victoria, the capital city and like see a museum, go to the market, do a trip uh, on a mountain when you can see a gorgeous view of all the island. But the day we well, wanted to do that, we found out we had to quarantine and that changed a lot of our plans. That will be a separate video. So those are our stories from our vacation at the show. We'll talk to you next time about how quarantine in paradise looks like and why it happened. We have some fears. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. So if you do go to... Um... Rolling back. <laughs> so the... Like... <laughs> uh, uh, words. How? So the first... <laughs> I'll start talking with you down there. No, no! I'm here! It is a la la la. It is a la la la. It is a la la la. Really? Tra la la. -la. <laughs> <laughs>